Thanks for tuning in. This is Brad Herman, publisher at Harrison House Publishers, and I am with Pastor Eddie Turner. You are the uh, the teaching pastor at Life Church. Life Church in Cook- Cookville. Cookville. Cook Tennessee. Vegas. Cook Vegas, the city that never sleeps. <laughs> Wow. That's a big, tall bill. Yeah, right. Now, why would you say that? Well, because it's about the sleepiest town in Tennessee. Oh. <laughs> I understand. Well, I'm excited, Pastor Eddie, because your book has been out for one year yesterday. Mm-hmm. It came out in March 8th of 2021, and here it is. Uh, it's still rocking and rolling. It's touching lives. And so what I wanted to do kind of today is just talk to you about... Where, where you're at with the book, where you're at with your teaching. I know you've been traveling the country and you've been sharing this message. What are you seeing in churches as you go around the United States? Brad, uh, literally, uh, things have shifted in the last year. When the f- book first came out, it was mostly for adults who were dealing with uh, mental health issues. It was still somewhat taboo to talk about that in church. Thank goodness that message is now becoming more to the forefront. It's okay to talk about mental health. Uh, But over the last 12 months, we have seen an increase of adolescents and young adults and even children who are now affected with mental health issues, stress, anxiety, the pandemic, everything that's going on in our world today, that spirit of fear which has been released is now affecting elementary age children, and we see them on a continuous annual basis, and parents are just at, uh, don't know what to do about the anxiety that they have been able to medicate away, and now all of a sudden it's coming to their children, and they don't know what to do about it. Wow. That's devastating. It, it really is. And, you know, mental health issues today, thank goodness that we talk about it uh, with more openness. Years ago, the care for those who were struggling in their mental health was taboo. You, you either went into an asylum or you just put them away somewhere. My grandmother died in, a, in, a, in what they used to refer to as an insane asylum. The last time I saw her, she was in a straitjacket, wow. and then she died. And so the care, the compassion was not there. We just didn't know what to do, and the church didn't know what to do. But thank goodness, mental health now has come to the forefront, and the need for mental health in the church has come to the forefront, and now the church has finally got on board and getting aggressive in ministering to people with mental health issues. Well, I think it's awesome that churches are having you come in and share this message, and, and I know it's got to be bringing hope to a lot of people. I mean, in most cases, what I'm seeing is people are, like, getting fidget spinners, you that, know? And, and medicating. And medication is good. There is a need for medication, but sometimes medication does nothing more than dull the symptoms. It doesn't eradicate the root cause. Uh, It kind of tempers stress, but it doesn't come and deliver you or set you free or give you really any uh, strength to overcome that stressor that's triggering in your life all the symptoms of mental health problems. So when you go and you're you're speaking at a church, you're sharing this core message, what are you seeing? What are the results that you're seeing? I mean, I'm I'm just assuming some things, but I'm guessing you probably see altars filled, people are hungry for for answers because they're tired of this medication. They're tired of fidget spinners. You're exactly right, Brad. Everywhere we go, at the end of the message, we give a call for people who are struggling with anxiety, depression, paranoia, that are on some type of uh, mental health regimen of healing, either through medication or counsel. And uh, we give a call for people to come up for prayer. And we will pray literally for hours for people. I was doing a uh, pastor's conference in Albuquerque, New Mexico, just some months back. 800 pastors there. They had me to come in and teach on the thought life. And I taught on it. When I gave the call at the end, they tell me over 400 of the 800 pastors came up for prayer. Wow. Now, what we're seeing is, is that when we lay hands on people, there seems there's an anointing upon us to minister in this area. When we lay hands on people, there comes an immediate 
help and deliverance. But renewing the mind is not a one-time event. Yeah. It's a daily exercise. Yeah. So when people come up who are being harassed or tormented by oppressive thoughts or racing thoughts, yeah. the anointing will come upon them and, and bring a reprieve for a little while. But then they must change their pattern of thinking and their thought life to get that to stay free. And that's where people usually lose out. Is they they want somebody to pray for them and do it for them instead of correcting their thought life from that day forward. You know that I love the content in here where you talk about the anatomy of a stronghold, and it's not built in a day, and it's not dismantled in a day. Right. You know, and I I, I resonate with that. And you're right. I mean, you know, we like to watch a movie. You know, a movie where Jason Bourne figures out who he is in two hours, yeah. and we want our life to be figured out in two hours. Right. But it takes days and days. And I, do you see? Uh, I guess do you see any kind of level of, of where people don't want to enter into that, and they just lose hope, or do people are are, you, are more people saying, "Look, I'm going to step into this, and I want to see this through, so I can live a free life." And 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 that's the. the disappointing thing is that people know they're struggling, they know they're in trouble. You know, you don't become an alcoholic overnight. You don't become no. addicted to pornography overnight. You don't go to bed one night sober and wake up the next morning bound. The stronghold develops in our life over time. Well, likewise, the deliverance from that stronghold will develop over time. You can get a temporary reprieve, reprieve but then you've got to put some work in. Yeah. You've got to develop some patterns in your life, some boundaries in your life, some accountability points in your life to make sure you keep your thought life and your fantasies and your dreams and your imaginations pure and healthy. Amen. And uh, if you do that, over time, you can get free. But uh, most people want the quick fix. And unfortunately, yeah. they didn't get in their shape quickly, and they're not going to get out quickly. Well, I mentioned to you uh, that I was going to bring up, I mean, one, I, I feel like one of the most insidious cards the, the enemy plays is the is the whole reprobate or the unpardonable sin card. Do you see that a lot in your ministry times, of people saying, have I, have I, have I done this sin that's made me un, unsavable or, or, you know? Brad, literally every person who has gotten in critical with their mental health, gotten critical, their mental health has gone nuclear, I call it. They're at the point where they cannot control their thought life. Every person I see like that has to deal with that thought. Satan, he has no new tricks. He did that to me. He literally told me, you've messed up so bad, God doesn't love you. Wow. You're going to end up just like your grandmother. Wow. And honestly, that was before I knew the word. So I had no ammunition to fire back. But every day or every week, literally every week, I have someone in my office who say, I think I've committed the unpardonable sin. Wow. And that works on their mind. Because, see, if you've done that, this is where Satan gets us. If you've done that, you have no answer. There's no hope. You have no hope. Yep. But that whole thing is a deception and a lie. Yeah. If you'd have committed the unpardonable sin, you wouldn't be in there getting help, desiring help. That's yeah. for the reprobate who has no desire. It's only a select few who's ever done that. So that's one that Satan uses, but he uses it over and over and over again. And what sets people free of that is they have to convince themselves of truth. Truth sets them free of that. Amen. Here's what here's what people don't. Satan, when when depression, oppression, anxiety comes on you, the first thing he wants to do is drive you into isolation. Sin breeds in secrecy. And if Satan can pull you into isolation, which people who get depressed, they don't want to be around anybody. They don't want to be around crowds. They go into isolation. Yeah. And the reason Satan wants you there and drives you there is he's got you all to himself to work on your mind. And 
if we can get people to come out of that isolation and get the truth coming into their minds, they will be a, a step ahead of getting free in their lives. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I think that's totally true. The, the, the isolation thing, I mean, I, it's just interesting how the enemy will say to us, they'll say, you're the only one that feels this Only way. one that's ever been through this. Yeah. <laughs> and, we, and, and we often eat right from that table. That's exactly I mean, it, right. It just amazes me, you know, and it, 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 there's nothing new under the sun, and if we just compare notes, all of a sudden we've got we got an enemy who has no strength, no power. Right. You know, it, it, it's absolutely amazing. And once people realize you're not the only one thinking this, you're not the only one going through this. Other people have had those crazy thoughts. Yes. You know, it was a stupid thought that got me. It was a it was a thought that was so unbelievable. My wife laughed at me when I told her. When the devil told me one day, going down the highway, I heard this thought pop in my mind, you're demon-possessed. And it stung me. I thought, where in the world did that come from? And I told my wife, do you know what thought popped in my mind today? She laughed. She said, Eddie, you're not. Don't think stupid stuff like that. But within a matter of a few weeks, that thing had me. It had me. And wow. uh, it set me on a tailspin. But thank God for his word and his spirit that set me free. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Eddie, one year uh, in, in print, I think that's phenomenal. Well, thank you for believing in the message and for Harrison House and the whole team for believing in it. Well, it's an honor to, honor to publish you. Thank you. And I, I, the hour for this book is, is on us now. It is. And it's so needed. So if you have a chance, get go out and get a copy of this book. I think it will bless you. And it's full of, of practical strategies to get free in your mind. Thank you so much for watching today.